The next forum has the topic how to strategically operate the best business and industrial accelerator within the integration of local area resources and advantages. Let me introduce our moderator. Our moderator is the director of Center of In Industry Accelerator and Patent Strategy, NCTU. Please welcome Mr. Qing Yao Huang. And now I'd like to introduce our panelists. The first one is the general manager of DMM.make Akiba. Please welcome Mr. Mitsuo Hashiba. Welcome, sir. Our next panelist is the director of Infocom. Please welcome Mr. She Hui Tong. Our next panelist is Acceleration Program Manager of HKSTP. Please welcome Ms. Kiki Wong. <laughs> Last but not least, we're joined by the CEO of Indospace. Please welcome Mr. Richard Tan. Dr. Huang, please. Okay. Uh, I think if you are the entrepreneur, or you are a facilitator, like accelerator, incubator, or you are investor, you should really welcome to join this section because we have the representative from uh, Japan, uh, from Singapore, from uh, Hong Kong, from Shanghai. And then they are the facilitator or the investor to all your business. I think I need to say a few words for this uh, section because we talk about AAN, right? And then we actually initiate the Asia Pacific Accelerator Network. The reason we are doing so because uh, we think the small and media enterprises, they need resources, but usually they don't. And so what are we going to deal with it? And so let me introduce a little bit in terms of these programs. And uh, we intend to actually have the global partner uh, because you are the small company, you, are, you need some resource and then you don't know anybody. And if you want to explore your business into global, what are you going to do? You need partner. But partner, you have to find a partner if you don't really know anybody in the different regions. So the network here is trying to find partner for you, uh, besides the corporate partner that we actually just uh, discussed in the last section, we are looking for the accelerator as your partner too and why they are they're so important because they are helping their regional company to grow global as well. So we can mutually benefit to invest in each other, uh, we can mutually benefit to see each other, we can mutually benefit to bring company to their regions. So the, the concept here again is very clear is that we need help, especially your startup, your small and medium sized enterprises and the government or the facilitator like us going to help you, okay? So uh, what is Taiwan now? Okay, I think you might be interested, you, you might know there's a Taiwan so-called Valley programs, but besides that, actually there's quite a few things has been established, and starting from the very fundamental, uh, Ministry of Education actually do a lot of work. We have more than 50 university actually start initiate this called entrepreneurship programs to let our student to be entrepreneur or at least has an entrepreneurship spirit. And obviously the Ministry of Science and Technology also create various programs including the Reconnect Silicon Valley, including the competition for your research. And then the Ministry of Economic Affairs certainly is the owner of the whole development including the incubator, accelerator, Rapid Prototype Center, Business Promotion, all, all related to your business growth. And uh, surprisingly, actually, the National Development Committee, they're also offering a lot of programs besides the policy change. They're also offering the incentives of the promotion to oversee. So altogether, I think there's a one 
uh, major targets starting from last year, we talked about reconnect Silicon Valley. The TIEC is doing that because we think that's still at the so-called the uh, source of the innovations. We think that we at least need to participate. It's not the only place that we should go, but at least we should participate and see what is the challenge there. But in order to do business, the reason we invite these four speakers here, the panelists here, because they are helping you to do the business. So we hopefully you can go together. And these are the current status. You may know we have a 95,000 new company each year in Taiwan have been created. So that's a big number. And then we are thinking we need to do something about it. We have to be systematically create value from very beginning. So we have a selected 1,800. We move down to the 80, and we move push to the 20 for them to do global. So we are doing it right now. So you are interested in participating in this program, you are very welcome. And uh, nevertheless, we actually have a very solid uh, so-called facilitated starting from incubator. We have 130 incubator. We have a lot of self-created company. And then we move to the next step called accelerator. So corporate is the not just the accelerator of the accelerator, they actually is a corporate accelerator. They are very different concept. You know to bring this to the different level. So we have the E3, we have triple I, a create accelerator as well. And then this is so-called uh, initiated by the government the accelerator program. So we try to bring everybody up to the next stage to the global partner in terms of the China, Euro European, in terms of the Americans, also the so-called Southeast Asia. And together, we're actually going to put a so-called more complete ecosystem from very beginning, the incubator, accelerator, corporate accelerator, and also the global partner. So if you are one of those, you're willing to participate in this program, there's a few criteria, right? So first, you be able to handle overseas team. So if your team go to your region, you can help them. Secondly, we need to establish a strong business model together. Uh, without a business model, we just networking. We just know each other. It's not moving forward. The third thing is that you should have a strong local industry contest, means that you can develop business in your regions. Finally, you need to be able to invest, means that you'll be able to choose company. You have to help them to f for the financial enhancement. So I think that's about my explanation of this uh, so -so association or the networking. And uh, let's, we, we're going to have a four represent from diff four different regions. They'll give us three, five minutes of what they are doing, what they, how they can help you. So uh, the first will be Hashibas Sensei, right? Um, hello, um, my name is Mitsuo Hashiba. I'm from Japan. And at first, uh, thank you very much for here. OK. Um, Okay, um, let me explain about DMM.make. Um, um, DMM.make is a one of the services of, by uh, DMM.com in Japan. And most, our, most of our services are internet service, like online video broadcasting and online games and foreign exchange, e-commerce, and so on. Then uh, one of the service is called DMM.make. This service is, um, consists of uh, those services. From top, top of left, uh, .make Archiva is a facility. And we also have a distribution team, an online cloud sourcing service, and a 3D printing service, and creators market. Um, we also uh, dealing uh, Robot from outside of DMM. And DMM.make Akiba is um, the facility and designed for um, IoT hardware startups, especially uh, prototyping phase. Then uh, we can. Uh, uh, no, startup, uh, sorry, I'm changing to the Japanese. Uh, 
スタートアップ人々がスタートアップするために必要なものの提供を我々は行っています。そして我々は2つのフロアでサービスを提供しています。このスタジオは基本的にさまざまなプロトタイプに向けた機材が置いてあります。でまた、えー、技術スタッフも、えー、多数おります。This is our te- technical staff. They are all、uh, major from big companies like Sony companies. Community. Okay, community. はい。えー、また、えー、別のフロアではベースと呼ばれるサービスを提供しておりまして、これはシェアオフィスという形で、mm-hmm. えー、利用していただいております。Uh, uh, this one we call it DMM base. This This space we offer a staff to have a creative space for them to、uh, develop their ideas and share the facilities. でまたこの施設の中では、えー、食事も取れますし、えー、さまざまな専門の書籍なども置いてあります。In this open space, you can have a, you can dine in here, you can have a recreation. Center here, you have a library and a team room, special, specialized team room, meeting space, locker room.、Uh, また、えー、イベントもさまざまなものを実施しております。Also, we offer many、uh, facilities here. We also have a community, community uh, uh, communication yeah. meeting. Yeah, networking events we have. これらは、えー、秋葉に入居し秋葉を使っているスタートアップの、えー、プロダクトの例です左上からプロジェクタープロジェクションロボット Our first one is projection robot. えー、真ん中が光る靴。これはスマートフォンと連動しています。スポーツシューズ。右が、えー、義手になります。えー、右の下が、えー、これはちょっと珍しいんですけど、犬の感情を光で表現するデバイスです。下の真ん中が、えー、電動式のバイクになります。キャラクターとコミュニケーションが取れる IoT デバイスです。えー、デザイン機械のデザインだったり、えー、ビジネスプランだったり製品の品質また知財これらに関してスタートアップのチームが相談をすることができるという形です。また我々はスカラーシップ制度というのを用意しております。Also, company, このスカラーシップは例えば秋葉の施設を無料で使うことができたり
if if you get a scholarship, you can、uh, use our facilities for free. えー、投資家からの投資を受けたりすることができます。Can, uh, share with, uh, えー、また、えー、投資企業とパートナーシップを組んでおりますので。スタートアップに対してお金の面でもサポートすることができます。これ以外にも我々は今、スタートアップが活動しやすい環境を作るために、えー、新たな、えー、パートナーを国内外で探しております。Now we are looking for、uh, people who want to start up their business and we help, to help them to build up and start up business. はい。で、また、えー、ディストリビューションチームもおりますので、日本国内で販売したい場合には、えー、海外の方含めお手伝いすることができます。Also, we offer distribution center. We help them if they build the products and we help them to distribute to the world. はいえー、以上が DMM.make の説明となります。Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is、uh, our company about DMI presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you.、Uh, DMM actually h a v e about 200 million equipment actually in their building and they help to do the fast prototyping relatively relative very completely. Our next one will be Hui, Hui Xian, Xian Hui, Xian Hui Tang, right? Xian Hui, actually,、yes. the director of Infocom. And they work very closely with them with the、uh, Taiwan. So, okay, yeah, well, firstly, I'd like to thank the organizers、uh, for inviting me to this really great event.、Uh, and I'm really excited to be here. There have been some great speeches by some uh, very interesting uh, speakers. Uh, you know, the, obviously, the corporate speakers brought a lot of、uh, stuff to the table as well. I'm actually very thankful to Hank for giving that introductory speech because it, it, it sort of defines a lot of spaces that Infocom Investments is in. Uh, I know a lot of people look at,、uh, look at us. In fact, if you look at my card, if you get to meet me and I hand you my card and you, you know, we get to exchange uh, uh, information, I'm actually the director of investments for Infocom Investments. So it doesn't help to dispel some of the misconceptions people have.、Uh, a lot of people look at the data points that、uh, Infocom Investment has. You know, we have got about $250 million of, dollars of assets under management,、uh, we are government funded. Uh, you know, we are an early stage VC, things like that. People have the impression that we are a venture capital firm, and that's not strictly、uh, wrong, but、uh, we are actually a lot more than that. And、uh, to really understand that, you've got to understand that our core mission is really to grow the startup ecosystem in Singapore. And、uh, how we did that, you know, has been, it sort of evolved over the years, but a few years ago, we looked at a similar model to what Hank has just、uh, shown all of you the process. All the various uh, stages, uh, from the ideation stage to the incubation to the acceleration, the seed stage, Series A. And、uh, we sort of came to two conclusions. The first is that if you're going to grow the startup ecosystem in Singapore, we will need to be involved at every stage of this,、uh, this life cycle. And the second one is that if you're just going to rely on Singapore alone, it's just not going to cut it. So, in fact, our charter is to look. All over the world for good companies that can actually join our programs、uh, in Singapore that we can help you to accelerate and hopefully you'll find a home、uh, in Singapore or if not, at the very least, use it as a platform for other、uh, markets in the region.、Uh, so, what do we do? At the ideation stage, we have got a lot of programs.、Uh, ideation stage is when an entrepreneur is not really sure whether he wants to take the plunge to start a company yet.、Uh, we sort of match them to mentors. And、uh, these mentors will then give them advice as to what direction to take、uh, they may want to consider.、Um, and oftentimes, it's really to just assess what, whether or not what they have is viable. And、uh, sometimes the mentor even goes and tells them, you know, I don't think you should really、uh, go into this.、Uh, why don't you go back and think a bit more? Okay, so that's at the ideation stage. When we were looking to acceleration, we realized also that we didn't have at that time a few years ago that we had that capability to run effective acceleration programs. So, what we did is that we went out all over the world to scout for the best accelerator program uh, uh, operators. 
uh, companies like Startup Bootcamp, uh, Plug and Play, uh, Rockstar, just to name a few. And uh, we said, okay, we will co-invest with you, uh, bring your program to Singapore, and uh, you know, start that program uh, there. And at the same time, we would then build our capability to understand how to run an effective uh, accelerator program and sort of tailor it for our needs in the future. So uh, accelerator programs, uh, those are the more traditional ones. They're obviously uh, corporate accelerator programs that we have worked with. Uh, I mean, uh, the gentleman from Cisco, uh, I think we worked with uh, Cisco very much in Singapore on some uh, corporate accelerator programs. Uh, we branded under Tech Pass. Uh, and my colleague here who actually runs that program for us in Singapore, you know, you can, if you have any questions, you can ask him about it. Um, so that's really uh, the accelerator programs that we do. And uh, we have got companies, or we have got startups from all over the world. We have got companies, uh, we've got quite a number from Taiwan, in fact. We have got companies uh, from Australia, we've got companies from the United States, we've got companies from India, China, Malaysia, Indonesia. So uh, we are not uh, specific to saying, you know, we only look at Singapore companies. And then obviously after the acceleration stage, we want to make sure that they continue their growth. And that's when the direct investments come in. Uh, we partner, we co-invest with uh, private sector VCs uh, to ensure that there's continued and steady growth and that there's no sort of uh, funding valley of debt. So in a nutshell, IPL really is uh, an end-to-end -end, uh, organization that is focused really on growing the startup ecosystem in Singapore and at the same time trying to extend that reach uh, you know, at a global level to try to make sure that the entire global ecosystem uh, moves in the right trajectory. Thank you. That's pretty much all there is for IPL. Thank you, Xianhui. Uh, uh, I think our next is uh, Kiki Wang. Kiki Wang actually at the uh, recent about the accelerator program at the Hong Kong Science Technology Park. Uh, she actually in charge of the whole operation. So that's how about Kiki. Uh, thank you, thank you, Hank. Um, and thank you all for your time to um, listen to our talk. So um, as Hank just mentioned, I'm working with Hong Kong Science and Technology Park and I'm the manager of the acceleration program there. So uh, what is Hong Kong Science and Technology Parks? We are actually a NGO, oh, wait a minute. Oh yeah, so we're an NGO under Hong Kong government. So we have five campuses uh, in Hong Kong. We have the main campus very close to Chinese EU of Hong Kong, if you have been there, uh, where we have almost 600 companies uh, from startups to SMEs to uh, large companies uh, to even uh, MNCs on the main campus. And the working population is almost 12,000 today. And we also have a smaller campus closer to city center in Kowloon Tong. Uh, Inno Center, and we have uh, three industrial estates. Um, those are lands and facilities for factories and uh, manufacturing. So um, on this slide, you can see some logos of some of our uh, tenant companies across the five campuses. So speaking of the industrial estates, I just mentioned that that's for uh, manufacturing. But today, uh, most of tenants uh, uh, on our industrial estates are primarily from traditional industries such as Li Qing Qi, uh, the sauce manufacturer. Uh, but now we have a grand ambition to transform the uh, traditional and old-fashioned manufacturing uh, on our uh, industrial estates into an um, advanced manufacturing base and hub. Um, by saying advanced manufacturing, uh, we actually mean three things. One is that has to be based around some innovations from uh, certain technology areas. We welcome innovations from all technology areas, from biotech to ICT to electronics. Um, and second thing is it has to uh, have some great market potential. So here we list uh, three application platforms, robotics, healthy aging, and smart cities. Those are the three application platforms that uh, Hong Kong Science Park is currently really focusing on. And of course, uh, there are a lot of other application platforms beyond uh, those three. And the third thing is we hope to uh, use technology to support technology. So that means we hope to see a high level of automation in the um, new manufacturing base. Uh, we hope to see the involvement and the um, um, leverage of IoT technologies um, uh, or some other um, uh, automation technologies to make the production of 
technology products uh, easier and more automated because we don't want to just uh, switch back to the um, very traditional labor intensive manufacturing as uh, Hong Kong used to have maybe 20, 30 years ago. Um, so I think I'll, I'll talk a bit more about those programs uh, later in the panel discussion section, but uh, basically we provide a variety of supporting schemes and programs to uh, support and serve companies and innovators uh, from various stages. Uh, we have a soft landing program to help innovators explore commercialization opportunities at a very low cost and um, a high level of flexibility. And we have incubation programs, of course, and we also have a, a leading enterprises acceleration program, uh, which I am running at Hong Kong Science Park. So in Hong Kong um, innovation ecosystem, we, Hong Kong Science Park, uh, are naturally the leader in the local ecosystem. So we actively um, work very closely with all the local stakeholders, such as the, uh, uh, the schools and R&D centers, as well as the public uh, incubators and the uh, private incubators and accelerators. And also we, um, we work from Hong Kong, but we, we do not just focus on Hong Kong, so also we uh, hope to bring together um, uh, talents and uh, parties and stakeholders from worldwide and, and encourage them to exchange ideas and information, hope to, um, by doing this, participate uh, in the world ecosystem. Uh, I think that is a very short introduction of what Hong Kong Science Park is trying to do today. Okay, thank you, uh, Kiki. I the next is uh, Richard Tang, actually. Uh, he's a CEO of InfoSpace. Um, I think he's a top-ranking accelerator in China. Uh, uh, there's a quite a few different, uh, so maybe you want to share first, and then I will ask you some tough questions. Uh, hello, uh, good, uh, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. Um, thank you, the organizer, for having me here. Uh, I must say that the, even though uh, language and culturally, uh, we are very close. My last uh, visit to Taiwan, Taipei, for business was about two years ago, and I think that this is a wonderful opportunity to uh, get to know what's going on in Taiwan in the innovation and entrepreneur space. Uh, interestingly, over the last few years, our engagement uh, in terms of uh, within Asia Pacific has been really with uh, Japan and Korea. So I would like to hope that following this visit, we might be. Uh, able to strengthen our ties together. Uh, just a little bit more about us. Um, we are, I'm Richard Tan, I'm based in Shanghai, uh, running a, an acceleration or inno, in, inno incubation uh, plus an investment funds kind of a project. Uh, we, are, we started about uh, three and a half years ago and we position ourselves as an incubation platform. Uh, primarily because when we started about uh, three plus years, four years ago, incubator is still a dirty word in China, whereby it's, they are primarily government run and own and they provide free space. Um, and as a private sector, market completely market oriented uh, operator, we really have to be very clear in terms of what we provide. So therefore we call ourselves an uh, um, incubation platform where we charge for the workstation as well as services, which is very different from what the typical uh, incubator and acceleration or accelerator provide in China. Uh, our mission since then has been to become the cradle of innovation and entrepreneurship in China. And uh, primarily, we modeled ourselves very much and we still benchmark ourselves uh, against the Y Combinator in, in, in China. We are focusing primarily in the seed and angel rounds or stage of uh, projects. Um, in the incubation space, uh, we run about 120 to 130 plus events and activities a year, uh, focusing on money, market, manpower and technology. Um, in terms of value added services, like I, I, I mentioned, we actually charge uh, startups for this. Uh, we provide uh, a lot of uh, know-how in terms of helping companies to fine-tune their products, their technology, uh, knowing what's the latest trends globally, uh, not just in China, uh, help companies to do uh, market development and business development. Uh, in this particular part, as well as the fundraising, we actually charge on a success basis, uh, 40%. Uh, on a success fees kind of uh, 
uh, for, for projects where that we help secure funding as well as a side contract. Uh, we also provide uh, enterprise solutions uh, as well as helping companies to uh, venture overseas. Um, another part that is quite different of us as opposed to the other uh, operators in China is that we, uh, there are a lot of uh, experimentation that we provide uh, within our platform where we work with uh, tech giants. Uh, we are uh, uh, including like uh, EMC, SAP HANA, Intel, Autodesk, Siemens, just to name a few. Uh, for example, uh, EMC, EMC runs the only, their only global uh, open innovation lab with us. Uh, again, uh, their main motivation is to access to startups as well as the new innovations. Uh, they are doing a lot of internal uh, innovation as well, but within the corporate uh, culture, they are not able to then spawn out successfully new projects, etc. So they are using us. Um, Intel, uh, Intel, we are sh they are only partner in Shanghai. We work closely with them uh, across different uh, dimensions, uh, including. Um, building up the community for, for, for the, uh, the Edison chips, for example. Uh, Siemens. Siemens is quite interesting. We started uh, our partnership with them just last year. Um, we started off uh, talking to them in Munich, and then since then we are running a, uh, together with them, we are co-running and co-managing an acceleration program focusing on Industry 4.0. And uh, they are very happy with that project, and this year, uh, we are going to go on with two acceleration programs with them. Uh, in, uh, beyond that, we are also working together with them on a uh, mega space. Uh, we are also working with them on a uh, hackathons focusing on some interesting domains as well. Um, apart from all these tech giants, we also work with uh, conglomerates uh, such as the Korean uh, Hanhua Group. Uh, Hanhua Group is not as well known as Samsung and LG because they are not in the consumer space. But in terms of financial services, they are the, big, they are the biggest in uh, Korea. Uh, one of our focus is fintech, and therefore we are working closely with them in that space. Um, Co-working space, that's, not, uh, that, that's a non-brainer. I wouldn't go too much into it. Uh, in, the, in terms of funds, uh, we have set up a uh, six, mil, 6 million US uh, roundabout uh, funds last year, focusing on, again, uh, seeds and angel phase uh, rounds. Uh, this funds is... We provide, um, uh, uh, we, we are one of the LPs together with some of the other private sector operators including uh, Prosperity Investment which is China's largest private sector fund of funds, uh, Cedic Capital and so on. Uh, a bit of our track record, we currently have about 140 plus startups uh, being incubated in our platforms. 30 plus percent have got overseas background including uh, Silicon Valley, uh, London, uh, Canadian, Japan, Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, and even Polish ones. Um, overseas background, uh, primarily uh, a lot of these are returning Chinese that have worked overseas for a couple of years. But we also have got pure foreigner uh, startups like from America, uh, the Polish one for example. Uh, because we focus in the uh, seed and angel phase, we haven't produced any unicorn yet. Uh, so therefore, we, we define uh, our next round of success as like you know, startup ventures, which we define as uh, startups that have reached 100 million RMB, which is about 15 million US within 12 months of their inceptions. I think this kind of record uh, you would not really find in China. Um, seven of our startups have been ranked uh, China top 100. In fact, our best performer is China uh, second runner-up. We have got an uh, uh, impeccable 90 plus percent uh, success, uh, success rate. Uh, I won't go too much into the International Acceleration Program, uh, but we do run this twice a year, three months per uh, round. Um, so we are into our six rounds, uh, six program currently. Uh, on average, we receive close to about 400 plus applications uh, globally, um, which we select about 10 for our acceleration program. Uh, what is also interesting is that 20% uh, of our participants have received their next round of funding with about, on average, four to six times increased valuation within, uh, within a month of uh, the demo day. And 60 plus percent of our participants have received their next round of funding with a valuation of increased to five to seven times. Uh, a bit on the, uh, this, some of the companies that I mentioned. Um, 
Huizhu Che, which is uh, currently China, one of China's largest uh, overseas car rental service platform uh, projects, uh, Baisi. And this is China's first bike uh, project uh, following its foray. Um, Baidu, Le TV, all this uh, have also jumped on board uh, to produce smart bike. But, but this venture, the founders have been quite interesting where they realize that they are advantage is not really uh, to go into manufacturing, but really to build up the whole community, the whole ecosystem surrounding uh, bike fanatics. So they have acquired a uh, social media platform focusing on uh, bike fanatics. Uh, today, they are the largest and the most complete ecosystem for bikers. Uh, with about 3 million uh, fans and 3 million and this is since this is a very niche area it's very sticky and there are a lot of things that can come out of it uh, including big data analytical uh, uh, solutions etc green apple this is a digital healthcare or mobile healthcare solutions they are very uh, a, a little outdated here they have already reached b rounds uh, uu mobile is the china largest uh, myfi provider right now they have been acquired by huawei Chao uh, Yi, a fintech um, solution. The other stuff venture that was uh, that's missing here is uh, X Power, and this is a project which we worked together with Siemens last uh, from last September till December, and within six months they have in fact reached uh, 15 million uh, US valuations. So I won't go too much into this. Um, again, the, all this uh, acceleration 101 kind of a thing, so I won't go too much. Uh, what is different is that in terms of our uh, mentors and all this, uh, this, uh, this here from successful entrepreneurs that started out ventures in, in China, uh, in Shanghai itself, uh, as well as with the, uh, the CTO, uh, as well as technical, uh, key technical people from the tech giants uh, that, that we work closely with. So we run about 140 plus, uh, 130 plus events a year, uh, and the reason we only have a small team, about less than 10 people. So in the uh, earlier speaker's uh, uh, word, our return on talent is actually very high <laughs> by the amount of work that we do, etc. Yeah. Now this is a very interesting uh, concept, which I hope to to actually highlight the importance of an ecosystem. Uh, and because of what we have been doing primarily, uh, we, we are currently spread over two buildings because we started off uh, 500 square meters, now expanding to 200. Um, we have been able to bring forth uh, the conglomeration of a lot of other players around this area, uh, which include like overseas ones, Nordic centers, we have got Bay Area having their incubation uh, here with us, Hanhua having their accelerator, uh, uh, Hong Kong Cyberport launching pad, Etc. Apart from that, we also have got uh, like ten cents having the accelerator, thirty six kr, uh, IT giant, etc. All uh, being within a um, one kilometers uh, of this, and uh, we work very closely together. And you know, like uh, there might be certain scope for us to work with uh, with the Taiwanese ones. Okay. Yeah. Now let me. Okay. These are some of the uh, partners that we work with. Um, our global partners and because we are running as a fund primarily our main interest is how our startup grow and expand so we, don't, we are not particularly hang up over that they have to be reversed in Shanghai in fact we also look at invest in projects in Beijing, Shenzhen, Hangzhou etc what is important is how to make, help them grow as a private sector uh, initiative uh, we are very targeted so we work closely with uh, uh, Mitsui Ventures in Japan for example uh, Korea we work with uh, uh, we are focusing in 3D animation, new digital, and now even uh, N15 from hardware as a hardware incubator. Uh, Hong Kong Cyberport, Singapore and Hong Kong, we are working together with them on the uh, fintech space. Um, Europe, especially in Munich, it's more in the uh, Industry 4.0, Israel, of course, and... Um, okay, let's see. Rich, no. Richard, I probably need to cut you because okay. you only have a 10 minute left. Okay, so right. probably I need to ask you questions instead. Because, you know, uh, what is a key uh, resource that you can help the startup, especially from the Shanghai region? Because we think Shanghai is different from the Beijing, Bay, you know, different from the Shenzhen. What is the, you know, what is what kind of company you you think will be most successful if I decide to go to Shanghai? And what you what you can really help? Yeah, the uh, the reason why we have been fairly successful over the last three and a half years is really that. 
uh, we are only focusing in doing um, what we think are our core business, primarily accelerations and investment. Uh, so even though we have been receiving, and, and I must say that uh, we have been enticed uh, by the government, by different governments to set up our platform in their loca uh, locale, uh, we are very clear that we probably will just concentrate in Shanghai. Uh, that's our main uh, base. And we build our resources around that. And through that resources, we are able to help then uh, the startups. So primarily in startup, uh, we are focusing uh, in, for example, uh, beginning, we started off with big data, cloud computing. Um, right now, we are focusing in AR, uh, IoT, uh, Internet of Things, Internet of Vehicles. Um, that's the name of you. Okay, thank you. Kiki, how about you? I mean, Hong Kong certainly cannot be Hong Kong, right? So have to be yeah. go somewhere else. So what really Hong Kong can do for the startup? Yeah, we, we offer a lot of things, so I, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, as every incubator and accelerator in the world, we, we do offer a lot of uh, fundamental resources, such as office space and uh, maybe some subsidies and grants, and, but that's just for the survival of the startups. In order to make a startup successful, uh, we have to do a lot of other things. Um, the key word of Hong Kong Science Park offering, I would say, is community. So community means a lot of things. Um, but I, I would say two most important things embedded in this one word will be people and market. Um, we have know um, some entrepreneurs kind of believe that technology and investment are the two um, most important factors um, in commercialization, but we do not agree because uh, once the technology passed R&D phase, it has to be commercialized and then market and people will be much more important than technology itself and even investment. So we provide a lot of um, um, connections to industry and we hope to uh, accelerate the startups process to uh, really go to the market and get the um, innovative solutions being adopted. Like for example, um, can I just talk into one example? Okay, so yeah. thank you. Um, so we uh, newly launched a new initiative called Technologies from Science Park. Um, <clears throat> the concept is we partner with uh, those large companies and industry leaders and to um, help them to communicate with the startup communities in Hong Kong uh, what um, technology solutions that they're looking for and what kind of problems that they wish to be solved by new technologies and what kind of new technologies they're willing to try out. So we believe that um, this channel of communication is very critical for startups to understand what the market is looking for. So we have started this initiative since last year, but for now we have signed up more than 20 partners to do this briefing and to do this communication with our startup communities. And we have seen more than 100 successful cases of uh, new technologies and solutions being adopted or being tried out. Um, I think that's one feature things that I particularly want to uh, bring to you the public's attention here. Yeah, great. Uh, Shen, Shen Hui, I think as in Singapore, especially from Limpo Camp point of view. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, obviously the connection with the government is very strong for us. Uh, you know, if you are looking at smart nation or you've got solutions there, you know, and IDA is the coordinating uh, agency behind it, uh, we are basically the, uh, the venture arm of the IDA. So if you come under one of our accelerator programs and you need access to, to a certain decision making or an understanding of the decision making process uh, to get a deal done with the government, then we would probably be a, a good fit for that. Uh, but other than that, uh, I think the location of our where we uh, house our accelerators at, uh, at Aya Raja, at our place called Bash, um, is also a very integrated space where there are also a lot of other venture capitalists, there are lawyers, basically it's an entire community designed or actually that grew around startups. So if you're there, you probably will be able to rub shoulders with VCs every other day, you'll be able to meet with you know, uh, get ad hoc advice from lawyers, you know, understand what IP uh, law is about, simply because there are just so many of these people wandering around the place and uh, you can, oh, they're always happy to, you know, for you to drop by and have a chat with them. So uh, if I were to just pick two items, which I think would be the competitive advantage that we would have uh, in Singapore for uh, startups, that would, those would be the two. Thanks. Okay, thank you. How about hashiba -san? Yeah, especially from DMM point of view, you know, what you can really help.
そうですあの、our facility's strong point is、um, uh, machines、uh, because our facility is designed for、uh, prototype phase, so startup can、uh, prototyping quickly. This is a, a one of the strong points.、Uh, second is a community, because there's a many kind of startups inside our facility, and we also have a technical staff to support、uh, startups. So、um, our facility's mission is to、um, make more comfortable environment to the startups. So, yeah. Okay, great.、Uh, I think I, there's a few、uh, keywords here, right? Connection, community,、uh, things like government relationship, corporate relationship, and certainly the, the,、uh, like the in those space, they are trying to make profit, right? So, in terms of how they really accelerate the companies more aggressively, and DMM really have a strong maker because I said they have a really a large, you know, complete in terms of, in terms of equipment for in terms of the prototyping. So I think because time running out, so I, my last question will be, how you expect to connect to Taiwan innovation ecosystem? You know,、uh, any suggestions? Because we are, the new government have the so-called Taiwan Silicon Valley.、Uh, there's a quite a few, not sure it will works. But then,、uh, what, what is your suggestion then? You know, how to really work with the Taiwan innovation ecosystem? So whoever like to come first, all right, Richard. Yeah, I I think the、um, I had a close look of some of the startups here as well as, well as the technology here、uh, yesterday. I think that what is quite、uh, obvious is that the in Taiwan、uh, you have a very strong hardware software、uh, integrated our projects,、uh, and you have got some very interesting IoT、uh, projects that come from there. And、uh, these are the projects which.、Um, Uh, as well as some of those that are、uh, what we call term as Internet Plus kind of a project in China, whereby really helping traditional industry to upgrade.、Uh, these are the projects which、uh, we are looking at, and also China has an insatiable demand、uh, for right now.、Uh, I think that these are the areas that we could work together.、Uh, primarily,、uh, when we were、uh, working with,、uh, in fact, I, I spoke to Li Kai Fu,、uh, this Changxing、uh, uh, Gongchang. Uh, over in Taiwan side a、uh, couple of years ago, and what was interesting then was that he came up with this、uh, idea about having a, a platform, hardware platform, where all this、uh, cloud funding and cloud sourcing could be、uh, happen, and and this is one area which Taiwan has got、uh, an advantage. But unfortunately, I think that he、uh, his focus was in China, so that didn't really quite take off too well. And I would like to see some、uh, leadership、uh, from Taiwan、uh, to to take up the lead on that and how we could. Then dovetail on that particular initiative to take take forth、uh, yeah. greater interactions、uh, and integration with the、uh, Chinese mainland. Okay, thank you. How about Kiki?、Uh, yeah, I think Hong Kong and Taiwan,、uh, really the two places have a lot of similarities between each other,、uh, such as the、uh, very strong、uh, fundamental R and D, and such as very constrained market size. Um, so um, I can think of、um, two things. That Hong Kong and Taiwan could work together and to benefit each other. One is、um, Hong Kong and Taiwan could be the source of information and talents、uh, and technologies of each other. So Hong Kong is very strong in R and D and science in certain areas such as biotech and also、um, electronics. And I know Taiwan is also strong in R and D、uh, in, in in some other areas as well. And Taiwan is very、uh, Taiwan has the expertise. In、um, electronics manufacturing, which I'm very impressed.、Um, during the talk of、um, uh, triple, so I'm, I'm I'm really impressed. I, I I heard about this two days ago, and I already made one connection for one of our companies to talk to triple yesterday. Okay,、um, great. And Hong Kong has a very vast shortage of engineers, which I think Taiwan could be a very good、uh, source and supply. And the second thing is Hong Kong and Taiwan could be market of each other. Because both places has a very limited market size, but、uh, if we pull the two markets together,、um, that may be not bad. And especially Hong Kong is a financial center, so for certain areas such as fintech innovations, maybe Hong Kong could be、um, uh, a very good first、um, foreign market from Taiwan. Okay, thank you. How about? Yeah, I think、uh, the, the the two speakers actually have highlighted a lot of the key strengths、uh, that I've seen in Taiwan, 
uh, maybe something that we have seen in our engagement with uh, Taiwanese startups is also that you're developing a very strong media. Uh, you know, a media startups in the media space are actually getting uh, stronger and stronger. And uh, we actually had a few that came to Singapore recently, and uh, the, the sort of level of sophistication is actually getting higher. So I think uh, you know it's not just confined to IoT and manufacturing and electronics. Uh, you know I think it's it's becoming a much more diversified uh, startup uh, ecosystem in uh, Taiwan. I think that's a good thing. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of an ad. Uh, actually, we have, we actually plan to come out to Taiwan again later on uh, in June, late June or July, actually to look at to see whether there are any startups that might be interested to join our accelerator programs in uh, Singapore that will give them market access actually to Southeast Asia and especially the big market of Indonesia. So uh, don't just look uh, to the east and the west, uh, look down south as well. You know, there, there are some big markets there. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. That's our new policy, right? Southeast Asia. And, like. um, I think just, uh, I suggest how, um, Uh, yeah, for example, to just exchange um, startups in Japan and Taiwan, or and we also uh, we need to find a problem uh, in each con each country. Then uh, problem must be first. Then uh, we can find uh, how to solu solution. And. Uh, our facility can support prototyping, or but we don't have a factory, or, so we can send our startups to Taiwan. I think. Okay, great. Uh, I think I need to conclude here. Uh, There's a great suggestion, right? Because certainly we need a leadership, you know, to co have the, some collaboration. And uh, I think there's quite a few mentioned about hardware software integration, manufacturing, which is a we all well known, which we hesitate to be stay in terms of electronic manufacturing uh, capability only. And so there's a suggestion in terms of diversify in terms of the uh, uh, different area. And also he mentioned something which I'm a little bit surprised in terms of the media and certain lot more exchange that need to be done uh, because we need our startup and we also need to take the, the, the impact from other countries or region as well. Uh, thank you all, all the panelists here. You know, uh, thank, thank them. Thank you, Dr. Huang. Thank you, speakers.